So One UI 6 has finally reached Samsung devices and it's definitely a good upgrade over the preceding One UI 5. So we checked out all the new cool features in One UI 6 and that's exactly what we're gonna be showcasing in this specific video. So if you are a Samsung user, watch it till the end. Definitely it'll be useful for you. And even if you aren't a Samsung user, you should watch it till the end because you could probably make a decision about buying a Samsung phone. Sorry, well, could you say that again? Ah, uh, well, Apple, we're not talking to you today. If you're here for the first time, I'm Aishad, you're watching Track and Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. If you are already a Samsung user and you want to download One UI 6, well, One UI 6 has started rolling out for the Samsung Galaxy S23 series. So S23, S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra have started getting it from October 30. So refresh your update page, you should definitely have it and you can download the OTA. But there are a few other devices that are currently running One UI 6 Beta, the devices should be up on your screen, right? now. Samsung hasn't mentioned which phones will be getting One UI 6 when, but the moment we get to know that, we'll add a pinned comment below. All right, now let's move on to the features. So the moment you switch on the phone, you actually start with the lock screen and the lock screen has a few upgrades now. So on the lock screen, you have the clock widget and a few other widgets. Earlier with One UI 5, you could only uh, increase or decrease the size of these widgets. But now when you edit the lock screen, you can actually move around the clock widget wherever you want to, which is actually very helpful if you are particular about setting up, uh, you know, the clock widget the way you want it to. But the biggest upgrade in One UI 6 is the quick settings panel, which has been upgraded and redesigned now. So you'll see that there are blocks or panels of information sets. For example, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are in a certain block. And then you have a massive block with all the other, you know, quick settings options. And below that you have the brightness toggle plus the eye comfort shield, dark mode, all of that. Very helpful, very visually coherent if you ask me. But one thing I like about the changes to the quick settings panel is the new instant access feature. For that you need to open the quick settings first and then head into the edit option and then you'll see the quick setting instant access. Once you switch that on, when you swipe from the top right corner, see what happens now. The quick settings opens up directly, you don't have to do two swipes. Very nice. Good job, Samsung. And then there's a change to the media player that comes up in the notification shade as well. It's very nicely done. I'll quickly show you how that looks. So when you play music and then you go here, you'll notice that uh, there is this really cool animation that comes in the progression bar now. Looks damn nice. Also, if you had noticed closely, you would have seen that the font looks slightly different now. The default font looks like this. Do you like it or not? Let me know in the comments below. I am ambivalent to it. Now, the biggest change that we noticed when we were testing out One UI 6 is in the camera app layout. So what you get is a very nice layout now. For example, you can see that you can clearly access the different, uh, you know, megapixel resolutions that you can shoot with within the camera itself. So we are using the S23 Ultra, so we can switch to 12 megapixels, 50 megapixel and 200 megapixel directly from here. So that's really nice. And when you go into the video mode, what I like is how you can switch uh, the video resolution and the frame rates as well. It's very nicely done with an overlay over your, uh, you know, viewfinder itself. It's very well done, quite nice. There are a few new camera features as well. So if you go into settings, you will notice that the auto FPS feature now has a few extra options. Also, when you get into the settings of the camera app, you will see advanced intelligence options. Now this is damn nice because Samsung gives you the control of the algorithm in your hands. So you can see there's maximum, medium and minimum. So if you shoot in maximum setting, Samsung will do maximum processing. Medium, it'll do medium processing. Minimum, it'll do very little processing. What I did notice is that there is quite a stark difference in the picture that we took in maximum mode and in minimum mode. So you can clearly tell that the minimum mode has fewer details and even the skin tone processing was completely different. With One UI 5, if you had to use any of the AI specific photo editing features within the gallery app, you would have to hit the three dot button, but you don't have to do that right now. With One UI 6, Samsung makes very good use of AI without actually, you know, tooting their horns about it. For example, in this picture, if I just swipe up like this, it'll tell you what all I can do with it. You want remaster, you want portrait effect, you want object eraser, you can do all of that. So also with the gallery app, say for example, you have a bunch of photos that you want to put in a different folder. You can do that with two fingers, multiple, uh, you know, inputs as well. So you long press and then you'll drag it like this. And there you go, just wherever you want it. I want to put it in favorites. Now, one feature with One UI 6 is actually lifted from iOS 16. Basically, what you can do is once you make the cutout, you can actually make that person into a sticker itself. Look at this. You've saved it as sticker and whenever you use it with your messaging app of choice, you can use Abhishek as your sticker if you want. Another thing that you couldn't do with previous One UI versions was that if you edited anything in a video, you couldn't save a copy. You can do that now. I'll quickly show you. Let me edit. 
just change this. Save. Save over original or you can save as copy. So I just hit it here and save as copy. That's it. The other thing that we notice is that you can actually change the size and the format of the video as well. So if you want uh, most compatible or saving space options or change the resolution, you can do that as well. Pretty cool. Now, while that was a basic edit option that should have been present in previous One UI features, this one is actually very, very helpful. So if you take a picture and share it, then before sharing itself, the camera gallery app actually tells you if there is any flaw with the picture that you need to sort of edit before sharing it. For example, if you take a tilted picture, it straightens it and then tells you to send it, which is damn cool. By the way, with One UI 6, you get a new app installed, which is called Studio App. So what is this Studio App? Well, it's a movie editor or a video editor, just like how you can do with iMovie on your iPhone. So yeah, so this is that. You can basically trim the clip, you can add your own music, you can add a lot of effects, all of that. One really cool new feature with One UI 6, actually also available on other UIs, but finally it's come to One UI, is the fact that you have multi-finger select and drag and drop. In fact, it works in different ways across apps, but I'll quickly show you how that works on the home screen itself. So essentially, say for example, if I want all of these three apps move to the other screen, I can do that. First, I just need to long press and select one of the apps. I can select all the apps and then I can do this. Then I can swipe to the other page with my right hand and move it here. Very simple. Also a tiny little change that we noticed with One UI 6 is that icon labels have been simplified now. So Samsung Health app is simply Health now and Samsung Pass app is simply Pass. All right, the next set of changes are within the settings app. So earlier, until One UI if you had to look at the battery settings, it would be under device care. Uh, now, battery settings are separate, which is nice because you see a different pane as well now, and there are a few tweaks to the design as well, which I kind of like actually. The next major upgrade in the settings app is in the security and privacy feature, where once you open the security and privacy feature, what you'll notice is that there are far more options now directly available for you. Also, we noticed an auto blocker function. Essentially, if you switch this on, Samsung itself will uh, you know, block apps from unauthorized stores, it'll run uh, security checks on apps, and it'll block commands by USB cable so that nobody hacks into it, their applications without your knowledge. By the way, you guys do know about the fact that there is a standard and light profile that you can switch on. So once you go into device care, let me quickly show you guys uh, from here, when you hit the performance profile, you can switch between standard and light. What this essentially means is that if you don't want too much battery drain, you can use the light profile. And in fact, with the light profile, the battery performance does improve, but the S23 Ultra has great battery to begin with, so I really don't have a need for that. Also, within the security and privacy feature, you can see something called permissions used in the last 24 hours. So when you go inside that, it will clearly give you an idea of, you know, what apps have used what part of your phone. For example, contacts were accessed by contacts, of course, settings, messages, phone, and Google. And you can also see the last seven days as well. So if any miscreant app is trying to access any part of your device without your notice, you can quickly check that out. I really like this. It's very useful to see if your data is being compromised or not. The next feature is actually very useful. It's called Smart Flight Mode. So with One UI 6, uh, you know, Samsung has made the system more intelligent. Say for example, you switch on the flight mode for the first time, it will switch off both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions. But then maybe if you have to connect a TWS bud, you'll have to switch on Bluetooth again to connect to the phone. But one once connected, Samsung recognizes the device. So the next time you put the phone in flight mode, then Bluetooth is switched on because it knows that you want to connect to a uh, truly wireless earbuds so that you can listen to your music on the flight. Damn cool. This is good use of AI. Also, with One UI 6, you can now send OTPs for hotspot connections. So if you don't want to give access to your hotspot connection to anybody for more than one time, then you can give them a one-time password. So once you switch that on, it'll give you a password. You can use this password to connect to our Wi-Fi, but you can actually do that. You're not in Pune right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The next feature is sort of a hidden feature because you won't be able to see it by default. So what you need to do is head into connections, open your Wi-Fi settings, and then go into intelligent Wi-Fi. Once you do that, you see this intelligent Wi-Fi option. Uh, the version number will also be written here. Just tap it and then it'll switch on the connectivity labs feature. So yeah, so we've already switched it on and within the connectivity labs feature, you get so much data and information. It's very useful. You can clearly see what band of Wi-Fi that we were connected to for the longest. For example, over here, the five gigahertz band, we were connected to it for 13 hours and 57 minutes compared to 2.4 gigahertz. And we don't have a six gigahertz router anywhere around in our office or studio. So we haven't used it. Damn cool stuff, yeah. And then it also tells you, uh, you know, the standard Wi-Fi 5, 4, 6, whatever it is, right? 
very well done you can also create a wi-fi home report so say for example if there are certain spots in your house where you do not get good wi-fi range which generally happens and if you want to maybe install a extender or a router or a mesh system you can do that with the home wi-fi inspection so with widgets you do have the smart suggestions option the smart suggestions widget which is actually very useful for a lot of folks but what you can do now with it is once you head into the widget settings you can see that you can change the background color or you can increase or decrease the opacity according to what you like. The next widget is the custom camera widget, which is very, very useful. So once you've set the widget up, it asks you which camera mode do you want to open by default from that widget itself. So starting mode, I can change it to say front camera video. Every time I click on that widget, it'll open the front camera video. And there are a couple of new weather widgets as well. Let me quickly show you guys. The dynamic weather one is damn cool. It's got these animations. I quite like it actually. Take a look at this. AI has also invaded the My Files app now. So within My Files app, you actually have a smart suggestions feature. So with smart suggestions, what you can see is that once you head into manage storage, you will notice that you can add more space to your cloud account, top three biggest apps, all of these things. It gives you sort of more data and data analysis for you to work with. One really good addition to the edge panel is the new smart select feature so once you get into edge panels you can see the smart select feature so you've select we've selected that actually already so every time we open the smart select option it's very good so with this smart select option what you can do is you've got these two options for rectangular and oval essentially this is a smart select for screenshot so when you move this cursor around you can see that there is an aspect ratio that it showcases. So it's a three by four aspect ratio. And it also shows you a pinpoint location of where you want to place it like a magnifier of sorts. So you can take a really nice selected sort of, uh, you know, screenshot. This is very well done. Good use of the power on tap. Now, after you've saved the screenshot, obviously you can also copy the text, which is there in the screenshot itself. And of course with One UI 6, you've got the updated emojis. You can see the emojis out here. What are your thoughts on the updated emojis? Do you like the design? Do you not like the design? Well, I don't use emojis too much, not a big fan of them, but then yeah, if you are, then you can definitely check these out. These are some of the major and minor changes with One UI 6, but there are a few more quickly running through them. So now within the camera app itself, you've got a, a few extra options for the watermark. So when you switch on the watermark and you open it, you can see that you can change the model name or you can change the date, the time, the font, the alignment of the font, all of those things. Also, all the Samsung apps now have an updated design. For example, the weather app out here. You can also set a unique lock screen based on the modes and the routines that you've set. By the way, modes and routines are damn cool as well. They're actually as good as shortcuts on Apple's iOS. Also, trash files used to be separate for My Files and the Gallery app earlier with One UI 5, but that's been fused and brought together in One UI 6. Also, you have the predictive back gesture feature, which was added as a feature with Android 14. So it works with the system settings app and uh, a few Google apps only, but it's a really nice feature to have and it does predictive gesture really well. Then you of course have the Android 14 Easter egg, considering that One UI 6 is running on Android 14. And last one, when you're looking at it, the animations are well, what do you think about it? Let me know. They've been upgraded to be slightly smoother, but still I would say that iOS does animations better. So these are all the cool changes with One UI 6. I think we've covered the length and breadth of it. So hopefully you like One UI 6 and maybe update it on your phone as well. We haven't noticed too many bugs and the performance has been fairly decent too with no effect on battery life either on our S23 Ultra. What has your experience been like? Have you updated One UI 6 already? Let us know in the comment section below. I'd love to know. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.